This video is about the beginning of the process. Those very first moments when you're thinking of your initial ideas and you're just starting on a project. We've invited some pretty amazing musicians to share their thoughts as well on um, how they approach this. I have had the thoughts um, of kind of, yeah, slight panic. Um, I think that's quite normal. Um, you know, where do I begin? I think sometimes I'm in a permanent condition of writer's block. Um, it's quite unusual for me to run into the studio thinking I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm very often faced with the issue that most people must think is, is the luxury of the rich of saying every day, so what am I going to do today? Um, and it is a luxury, but it's also quite intimidating. I find that, that open, that blank canvas extremely scary. You've got all this work ahead of you, but without the work and without the time, you're not going to be able to make the magic. For me, it's that initial, that burst. I mean, I love it all, but that initial burst is, is my favorite because it's all about the potential of something. It's exciting. And I really believe that you need that at the start of a project. So if you don't wake up every morning with an entire film score or a number one hit in your head, don't worry, that's normal. People who haven't got quite a lot of experience of making things think that you can only make something if you already know what it's going to be. And this is nearly always not the case. The impression people have when they think about somebody like Beethoven is of somebody who walks around with a symphony in his head. Yeah. It's all in there and he's just got to somehow write it out and get people to play it, to realise it. And interestingly, even Beethoven famously reworked all his scores. If you look at the sketches that he made for them, they're covered with crossings out and changes of mind. So many of the artists that I like, if you ask them about how this piece came into existence, it's a complete mess. There was no coherent mm -hmm. framework. Of course, after it's happened, you can, you can kind of reconstruct how it may have come into existence, but that isn't the way it feels at the time. What, at the time, what's happening is that you're, you're improvising, you're making it up as you go along, and you're thinking, oh, that's good. Oh, so how do we fit that in? Yeah. Oh, I might have to get rid of that bit then to make that even better, yeah. you know. But really, it's a, it's a muddle. Yeah. So I think people are very frightened of muddles, and I don't think they should be. Yeah. I might not be able to see or understand what the final piece of music is like, but as long as I'm being guided by my intuition, I trust in that. So maybe take the pressure off yourself and just begin to play with music, maybe by improvising. When approaching writing, when sitting down, and I always sort of tend to sort of start improvising, but with the knowledge, that I'm not going to use everything. I'm not going to use every single note. I'm not going to use every single idea. It could be that none of the ideas I sort of feel like I want to use then. But the likelihood is that if I've sat there for an hour, there'll be one sound, one little, maybe two notes that I quite like that have just like pinged out and sort of like just waved at me a bit. So I might take those and then I might write them down just like, no one can see, like the other notes can't see. <laughs> no one can see. It's very secretive, but very gently. Um, it's not, I don't want to scare them, you know, but by sort of saying you're my favourite. I'm sort of always alert to um, any little thing that happens that hasn't ever happened before. Don't ignore it, just say, now why is that catching my attention? What is it that has interested me about that? For me, it's never a mental thing. It's never like, right, I'm, I'm going to do a one, four, five chord thing or something. It's like you start playing and it's like you catch, you, 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 oh, that riff. Oh, I like that. What I think about composing, it's a lifetime journey. And if you write a really big piece, it can seem so daunting. Even a piece with, say, three or four, Place. If it's a long piece, that's quite daunting. So it does help to have these micro jobs. When I started 
started writing this album, or I've just started writing the album, and I was so intimidated by it. So I was like, it has to be an expression of my whole life. <laughs> like every day, every experience, every emotion, every love, everything. And then I was talking to someone, and I was like, I definitely can't do that. I definitely can't do that. And then um, someone said, no, 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 you just have to, it just has to be one feeling. And that minimizing things really helped. So in the same way, when so sitting down at the piano, the whole instrument is, is a friend, but you don't want to take everything from that friend at once. Just use whichever way suits you, or maybe mix up the different ways of, of working, whether it's sort of singing, playing an instrument. Or um, listening to things, so creating a um, a playlist of different music just to listen to and get inspiration from, or reading literature, looking at different art, watching something. So I don't think it just starts with sitting, staring at a page. It starts with just trying to get a bit of inspiration from somewhere else. It could be um, chords that I like or scales um, that I like and maybe improvise around them or find shapes that are interesting and resonate with me or what I'm writing about. Um, I'll try and play around with rhythms as well. I'll often start with a hook, a bass hook, and I'll just sing over that, and I'll just sing some stuff, and just really start, and then just repeat it over and over again until it become, it feels like it's got an energy, and then I'll sort of know what the energy is, and then I'll add a chord. A lot of time for me can be working with a drum machine, mm -hmm. and you set a tempo, mm -hmm. and from that, for me, things happen. It's literally putting yourself in that space. It's almost like a semi sort of meditative process. Whatever instrument you're playing, you get into it. Yeah, just try to find a little nugget that can maybe spark some kind of interest and that can lead me down a path. So what I usually do is, you know, with Line of Duty, I was lucky enough to come on earlier with the script and I would just sit at the piano and I would try to find the essence or the spirit of the show. And so I worked and, it, you know, it took weeks, weeks, and, and, and I came up with a sort of a suite of music. And, and it didn't matter how the length of it. I just wanted to get the essence. I wanted to get what is the what kind of elements, what kind of instruments do I want in there? What, you know, what kind of harmonies? What, uh, what is the, the, the theme? Yeah, it, it, it's really funny. Inspiration mm -hmm. kind of strikes whenever it, <laughs> it wants. So that's part of the magical process of music making. I like to just try and collect ideas um, as I'm going along through my life. Um, often these ideas come to me in the shower. I spend quite a lot of time just doing rather apparently tedious things like looking at new pieces of software. And when I'm looking at it, what I'm always doing is I think, well, I'll just make a little demonstration piece to see what this can do that nothing else could do. So in a way, I'm fooling myself into making a piece of music by, by going around the back way saying, I'm just making a demo of the equipment. Quite often, good pieces come out of that. I definitely do try and trick myself into working to kind of lower the pressure. I'll tend to kind of like side-eye an instrument for ages, <laughs> just be the piano. And then I might sort of like sidle over to it and then just start playing something or even start playing a tune that I know that belongs to someone else. And just, bit, just to make sound if I'm feeling kind of a bit insecure or something that day about sort of starting. Collaboration is, is, is always going to be a learning process. Um, you, you just kind of jam a little bit and you sing along to whatever the producer's playing or you play a little bit on the keys yourself or, and you see what sounds nice. And if you find something that makes you feel something and gives you an idea of where to go next, you jump on that. I think um, being able to let go as a composer is a huge part of it. And for me, it's one of the most exciting parts of it, actually, being able to come up with an idea and if you've given it to live musicians, for example, allowing it to become what it needs to become. You'll just set up the mic, set up a loop, get it going and just sing the ideas that come to your head. Just get them all down, listen through to them, pick the good ones. Um, I did this with a producer called Chorus. He's a producer artist. 
Um, we did a tune together called Breathe Again. He had the track ready. I, I just did improv takes. He, we went through them together um, and kind of decided which ones we thought were good. I really get very excited about things. And I think that's the fuel at, at the early stage of something. The fuel is somebody saying, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do some more. Let's keep going at it. The, the anti-fuel is someone saying, oh, I don't know. You know, you just don't want that. You don't want those people in the room, actually. It's a very vulnerable thing coming up with an idea and saying, I think this will work, and then other people going, no, I don't think it's worth. So it's really important in um, a group of musicians and people you're collaborating that, that it doesn't get egotistical, that people understand the importance, even if one person, and they're always in a group, there'll be one person who says less than the others, there'll be someone who says more. But when that person who doesn't say that much, they are as equally important to the energy of that group, of those that, it's like an organism. You know, it's like a football team. Not everybody's going to be the striker, not everybody's going to score goals, but you know, if you get the right, the right fit, the right group of people, then that's the most important thing. The crucial thing is that that state of not being sure exactly when, where you're headed early on in the process, that can actually be a good place. It gives you a feeling of ease about discarding certain ideas and moving towards other ideas. Some ideas you'll just know that it's not going to work and that your heart's not in it. You'll, you'll listen back to it and stare at it and you just don't connect with it. On a bad day, that's, I guess that's part of the process um, and like, you know, being healthy as well is you have to try to learn to be like, hey, it's, mm. it's okay, you know, tomorrow is another day. It can go in, and sometimes it's funny. Like I might come up with an idea that I think's awful, and then a week later, once some time has passed and I had some time to just sit with things, I go back and I'm like, "Hey, that there's a kind of cool thing in there, and that might work with this other idea." Sometimes I've found that the ones that, like the melodies I've written that I don't like, I've come back to them and thought, "Oh, maybe I'll just change this note," and it works suddenly. Um, or I'll find a little segment that it's not quite right. So maybe I'll reverse it or change the rhythm. So you can get a lot of music out of like really basic ideas. Some ideas I might know for sure, okay, I want to write this. Um, example, um, Steam Down Orchestra asked me to write a tune for them and I just knew exactly what I wanted to achieve and I just banged the tune out and I was like, yes, this is it. Other tunes I think you go back to over, over years even. I've written things that I've really dismissed and then somebody said, oh, I really like that. I tried to be as uh, unselfconscious as possible because I think it would make my life very hard. It's already quite, it's quite stressful being a composer. I'll write down maybe five very short melodies um, even if they sound really cheesy or dreadful, I'll just write them out because it's quite good to get rid of the rubbish because um, you'll eventually find the good stuff. There's a time for reflecting on the quality of your work and that probably isn't at the beginning of the process. That's the time when you want to be open, where you want to quieten your inner philosopher and not judge things too quickly. Um, because something may happen in that early process which you would never would have planned. Everyone is different, but um, I think uh, recklessness, sort of uh, a, a, rec a more reckless approach to just getting something down, is going to be your friend, definitely. I'm never scared of the blank page. The moment I disengaged my head and said, I'm a songwriter, I've got to write, I had to get rid of that. And the moment I just sort of laid myself open and go, OK, start playing, it's all intuition. And as long as you can back that up, capture those moments, whether it's on an iPhone or something, um, and then you, you start working on those things. Dreaming up melodies isn't rocket science. It may be a lot easier than you think to write an absolutely brilliant melody. A tune like Crazy in Love, Da, 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 da. Is that really such a complicated, amazing idea? Or Beethoven's Ninth? Da, 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 Are you really saying you couldn't make up a melody? 
as good as that. I think you probably can, and it's more what you do with that melody that's going to count. There's an early sign works called What's Up Doc, and basically the melody line is three notes. Sometimes it gets so lonely that I eat the television. Sometimes that's all the way through the song. That's all yeah. you get. But the rhythm underlying it is, you know, is is of interest, and so everything locks together. But I actually sometimes play a game of trying to come up with a really bad idea. And the truth is in music, it's, it's not even the material, it's what you do with the material throughout the piece. We asked a lot of uh, musicians who write music to tell us where they get their ideas from. And it's incredible the variety of different um, situations um, that people have found themselves in where they come up with something or find something which is really useful to them. The washing machine was on and it was going, it was really, but that was the moment that I sat down and then I wrote what became a really main, big, important theme. Um, but it's really funny because all my voice notes that I've like, tried to record it on, all you can hear is. I did it on the way over here. There's suddenly an idea came and it was just like, it was hearing a piece of music and, a, and I was just like, oh, I like, I like the tempo of that. Oh, this could work with musicians yeah. I'm working with. Yeah. Building on something like that, yeah. The band Matmos made an entire album out of the sound of a washing machine. Every single sound on there taken from samples of a washing machine. You'll actually find that there's music pretty much everywhere if you're open to hearing it. Sometimes the most important part of your process, the bit that really turns the corner on a piece and makes it something that's going to be good, is actually you finding something perhaps that you wrote ages ago and just deciding to focus on that, not just inventing something new. It's the careful selection of the millions of ideas that you could do, not the invention of a new thing. Be honest. A simple thing to say, but a simple thing to get wrong as well. When you're starting out on a project, you know, the person that you're working with, the song that you're deciding to write, the, um, the gig that you've taken on, the commission that you've been given, is that something that feels true to yourself? That's a really important decision. You'll probably write better music if it is true to yourself. You have to be able to protect some sense of what it is that you feel attracted to. You can't just blow with the wind because I think when you very easily give up your creative control, next thing you know, you'll be in a place that you will look back in five years and say, well, not only is that not me now? It actually wasn't even me then. I was literally just going through the motions to satisfy somebody else's thing. So it's about having a kind of strong sense of what your kind of identity with it is, but then at the same time being flexible enough to assimilate good ideas and not being shut off. When I'm working and I know that I'm really at the centre of my own kind of truth, and that that is coming out in the purest way. That is the most exhilarating feeling. And I just feel like I can write and write and write. And it's so exciting. And those feelings are exactly, that's why we do it, I think. So there you go. There's some simple thoughts about that early stage of the, the writing process. We've done lots of videos on how to develop those ideas once you've had them.